Yo, thank you, Jonathan. Narato, you all matawanga, like to speak in language. And ka bikan wanga yo gololo bokma the money jonathan ka sabin ka ulman nga maka ka bukpak nga maka nga madiang bala i'd like to welcome you to this part of the country in millingen bay ayurwe Millingen bay Jonathan and Sabine, as well as those people watching and listening tonight, you're welcome. And I would like to also acknowledge the traditional owners of this great country on Millingenby and the surroundings, which is the, the land of the Walamango people. And we are very obliged to sit here and record and, and share stories with the rest of the country and the rest of the community out there. Yo, Naraya ko ingi agoyola, alia daling mira, Nara yormo. I Kabing Ruang or Marki Munangara Kuanga Marapai, very bucking by area, dear Rungara Muruka Rungara Kadara Rum, Muruka, Mali Pranya Terapurai, Munangalitanina Gumur Gumur, Kawanganamir. Ni Murdalamo, Angara Murdalamo. I come from, and I am a senior elder of the Lia Daling Murray clan. And I come from Buckingham Bay, just east towards my country, near Kalimanko and Kapoya. And I represent my electorate of Mulka and the Mulka, the word Mulka, I have chosen so that it is a space of where we can sit, you and I as leaders, the government and the leaders of our clans, the indigenous communities out here, leader to leader. We talk diplomatically through delegated space. We're not bow bowing down to any authority up there. The government will and should recognize that I represent my Yolngu government. I come from a Yolngu government, from my a clan, from my tribe. So this is what should be recognized. And that's why we sit in the Murka space. So I guess that I'd um, rec uh, explain that the uh, of my member, uh, my electorate is called Murka. It's where we call uh, the prime ministers, the delegates who come in and want to sit down. Instead of coming, giving us orders, this is what the government is going to do, this is what we have in plan, and this is the, um, the prime minister, or this is the law and order that we are presenting. But they should also recognize that there are law and order here. We are a more of self-governance as well, and we should be respected as a government and government through a delegated space. Um, 
ni kajatir question kau nak buat? We can start. Go ahead. Yo. Is that going okay? Is that is that working all right? Or do we turn turn it off so that if it's going all right? I don't mind. Yeah, we've, we've had some um, technical difficulties with the internet out here, and so um, if our sound is okay now. Okay, well I'll keep the chat open and um, feel free anyone if you're having trouble hearing us, to um, or if the connection is too bad, please um, let us know through the chat, yeah. and um, we might we might shift to audio just to get a bit of a clearer connection but um yo uh we'll um we'll get stuck into it but you just treated the audience to a little bit of story about that mulka yeah um that name that you suggested for your electorate which was previously called nulamboy and so you were just now explaining that what that meaning of mulka is that safe space for people to of power and delegation to meet as now it equals. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And it is um, the mulka is a is a delegated space. It comes from the Ngara law, which is the parliament, Yoma Parliament. Mm -hmm. And we call it Ngara. So this is where a space where two parliaments, um, delegations from two different uh, government departments. Or, or the uh, people come and meet, sit down together, uh, delegations. The, the politicians, uh, politicians, diplomats. Diplomats, yeah, that's the word, mm. where diplomats come and meet together. Mm. And, and that's where how things should work. And that's why we said, if we name this uh, electorate as Mulka, then we can work from that space. Mm. We don't say, they're not higher than us, and we're not higher than them. Mm. We work together. Yeah. Yo. Um, so tonight we're going to talk about a few different things. Um, Yingya is uh, probably start talking about a bill that's coming into Parliament in the Northern Territory uh, next week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's about child protection, something that I know Yingy has uh, talked very strongly in the past and um, continues to do so. And we might touch on a bit of story about the, the kind of COVID stuff that's happening in the territory. Um, and maybe if there's a little bit of time about uh, the importance of homelands and self-determination. Self-determination. You know, uh, this one, Yung Maram 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 is uh, it was your election campaign kind of slogan, and yeah, it means a lot of a lot of things, you know. Yeah. Um, I also like the. We'd like to invite the audience to. Um, we'll, uh, Yingy and I will have a bit of a chat, and then we'll save some time for questions at the end. But if you do have any questions or any comments throughout our discussion, feel free to chuck them in as they come up, and. Um, if there's anything that's relevant, I'll, I'll pick it out and we can ask it on the spot or save it to later. But yeah, please jump in whenever, whenever you want to, if you've got any questions or comments. Um, but yo, uh, first question about when you first came to parliament back, I don't know, what, 2016 or 17, um, you called out the government for taking the younger children out of Arnhem Land and into to care in in Darwin and, and different places. Can you tell us a little bit about what's happened over the time you've been in parliament? Yeah, good look. Um, <clears throat> when I first came in, I was elected in 2016 in August. But I um, started uh, uh, in the chamber after being sworn. I um, noticed and I started asking questions about uh, in 2000, uh, February, rather, in February 2017, I made the following statement to the media. And that was, the statement was, I demand anti-government stops the practice of removing 
your more children, young children, from their family and country and their culture. I want the government to engage with myself, people like myself, and other young leaders about giving your communities the authority and resourcing to work in partnership to protect young children from harm, including the harm that occurs when they are removed from their country and their culture. So that's what the Dao is good of. And this was at the time when nine children were removed. Nine children have been removed from Yolngu community, from Yolngu country, in the few months before and following the media from across Australia. So we saw the return of, of a lot of those children to kinship care placements mm -hmm. right after that. After that, no, it, after um, that happened. Media statement. Yes. And going on towards later on in my term, last term, uh, in August 2019, I again stood up and made this statement again in the parliament chamber in speech about the empowerment about our communities to be recognized and involved in the care and protection of our children. This was the part of our debate about changes to the care and protection of the Act. During the debate, we and I brought an amendment to the Parliament. I brought an amendment that gave real recognition to Yolngu authorities so that Yolngu can have power and make decisions through self-determination. Eh? Through self-determination. There, there is a section in the law, recent law that lists information sharing authorities. Uh, where people can, who they can share with and what the list uh, or the uh, law um, requires. The list includes the CEO of the department, the carer of the child, the principal of the school, teacher of the school, a person in charge of a hospital, the police, a lawyer, etc. They were all Balanda authorities. Eh? We might have to explain to the audience what that Balanda word is. The Balanda is the non-indigenous, non-indigenous authorities in the panel. In this list I've just given, there weren't any indigenous people uh, as authorities. There were only Balanda authorities. Mm. But we do do our Yolmo, sorry, but where do our Yolmo authorities sit mm. in this space? And so I put forward an, an amendment to the law so that we wanted to try and see if it can be accepted so that we would work diplomatically together, uh, Balanda and Yolong, mm. in non indigenous leaders and indigenous leaders. My amendment added to the list of information sharing authorities. And they were a senior Aboriginal authority, a person who, according to the customs, and a traditional law of the community or a group to which the ch child belongs is con considered an authority for that child. 
examples for definition, like a senior Aboriginal authority or a leader, a person that is a grandfather of a child or a clan elder or clan leader of a child of the one, the child or the child's mother or the child's father. That was the amendment that we put in so that everybody can be accepted, the, the own family and relations, relatives, immediate family can have say towards what is happening to their child mm. and the affairs that is according happening. And so what happened with that amendment? The um, amendment was voted down by the government. Mm. Uh, that's what the story was. And those those uh, different people that you mentioned, those young authorities, like the grandparents, the clan leaders, the, the mother and the father, that's not just a, a random list of, of people, but that's all people with power and authority according to the Gurutu. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you know. They are the grandparents are the, because at the time a mother is young, you know, still learning how to look after and where what to teach in education of language, was respecting elders or learning language and culture and ceremony. Grandparents are more experienced mm -hmm. and they take over and they will start teaching the mother as well how to look after it. That's the welfare of a, a child. A grandfather, if it's a boy, uh, then the child is taken and shown what there is for the child to learn about when he when starts growing up, mm. songs and dances and hunting even, respecting people to serve in the near future. Mm. And, and that's where they, the children go. And um, parents, of course, are there, mother and father, mm -hmm. uncles and immediate families, that are, they all have their, um, a part to play in, in the at the grassroots at the local decision making mm. process the whole family works mm. together towards the child yeah. that's how it is done normally yeah. and that's all part of kind of your law the the way those different roles who is caring for who and who's who has power and authority in that family and kinship yeah. mm. Mm. But that was voted down by the government. That was so, voted down by the government. Um, I wanted to ask you about, I know you've had some um, personal or community experience involved in that kind of issue. Do you want to talk a little bit about that maybe? Yes. Um, what I was explaining about uh, actually happened um, at a time in one case. It happened uh, in 2018, rather. Mm. A mother called me because of understanding who a mother can call. Mm. is a, a leader, a senior elder or a leader to help her to support if there's conflict uh, going on between her and her child or, or, or somebody else who uh, who is going to look after the child. Mm. So a mother called me to say she was worried that the charity families were coming to take her child away. This mother was, was within my clan. Mm. And uh, so she called me. And it was on the weekend that, that um, the charity families or a young attractive family they, that was working for the um, attractive families. Mm. And they are, these are the 
the um, like the um, a uh, advisory group or a, a, um, a worker that works for tertiary families, mm -hmm. which is under under their authorities, yeah. who just comes along and tells message. This is what we want to do. Mm -hmm. You tell this woman that this is what's happening, mm -hmm. and she didn't have any didn't know what to do, so she called me and said, I got, I want to get some advice from you. What do, what can I do? So I called up, it was on the weekend, mm. and said, this woman is asking whether I can help her out, step in and we can explain it properly together. Mm. But she knocked back the, my request and said, this is confidential. Mm. This is confidential that uh, we only come to speak to the mother and the child. And I was really angry with that as well. Because, mm. And I said, but that's not how it works with your own law. Mm. And she was calling you as the clan authority. Yeah, the clan authority. And you were not talking as a politician or as the local member, but as that clan leader. And the clan leader. Mm. Like we were, have um, said in the first mm. part there. And um, but because this is what how the government works. This is how the Balanda, how white man's system of law works. Mm. Uh, they want to work with just the mother and the child when it includes about <coughs> a child mm. but, and a leader has no say in this. Mm. And it's all about confidentiality. And, mm. and I find that really, really. Uh, and it was frustrated. I felt really angry and frustrated. And I am a leader. Uh, and there is a child with concerns. There is a mother with concerns with that. But they won't tell me what the concerns are. Mm -hmm. And we asked them, how can I help? When I, when I asked him about whether we can help, this is the law then. But this is the Balanda laws disempowering our communities mm. and undermining our Yolngu authority and our ability to, to self-determination. Mm. It's a real thing that we have been practicing for a long, long time. It's a self-determination in within the clan groups. We solve issues about our people. And we tell, we, we here, we treat the government as another clan. And mm. we tell them that we can take care of it. We have self-determination. We want to be part of it and have senior elders to talk. But they didn't agree with it. They, they, they didn't have it on. Mm. And this is where the governments need to look at all laws are building on self-determination and empowering communities. Mm -hmm. and that's what they need to learn. And that's what they, what they need to understand how to work with, with families and children. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's not just talking about um, you know, putting in new treaty laws or local decision-making laws, but it's looking at all those different laws and how they uh, interact with Yolngu and Yolngu authorities and make sure that all those different laws in education or housing, uh, child protection, how they support self-determination. So they think that because people lived in, in, the, in the bush and there's no offices, there's no parliament house, there's no buildings and people we think we just live in the bush uh, any way we can. Mm. But they don't understand that we have a system of law that we live by. Mm. We have governance. We have we have uh, through our system, through our government system, through our law system that we have survived and we have a structure that we have lived by. And it's, we survived for more than 60,000 years. Yeah. And, and that's what we have practiced. 
and here's a government that hasn't had experience in how our system works, comes to our world, mm -hmm. comes to say, now we think what is better for you. We know what's better for you. Mm -hmm. So we'll do it our way. And this is what the government has been doing all the time, mm -hmm. ever since the intervention. Yo. Yo. Um, yeah, it's a bit, when you put it like that, it just sounds so silly that this kind of white law that's been around for a little twinkle of time yeah. thinks that they know more than a system of law that's been figuring it's figuring it out for too long. Um, so after all that, these different media statements and amendments that you've put through and this experience you've had within your own community, um, coming into now, and there's this child protection law coming into Parliament next week. Um, there are going to be more amendments. And so these amendments are about how those different organizations, and most of them are Ballander organizations like the schools, uh, maybe the Shire, the council, the police, um, how they share that information about child welfare and child protection. Um, and so this time around, they want to create what they're calling a data access agreement for a database that's going to hold all this information for territory families about children. Uh, territory families being the kind of child protection welfare uh, department and agency within the Northern Territory. So these agreements can be made with child related organisations in communities and between territory families. Do you want to tell me a little bit and tell the audience a little bit about that bill that's coming into parliament next week? Yes, um, this is a bill, <clears throat> a fairly a big bill mm. that comes through. And they've worked on it in the chamber. They've worked on it on, in their chambers, um, in their offices up there to talk about and make laws for our children mm. and the people out there in the communities don't know what's going on, mm. don't know what's happening. And the bills are very, very complicated. It takes time, mm. six months, maybe a year yeah. for people to understand, let alone from translating it from English to Yorumata mm. and vice versa, from Yorumata to English, it takes time. But these bills have only just come up in, in the last sittings, which are only about sometimes in a month. Yeah, three, four weeks ago. Three, four weeks ago. And said we have uh, made some amendments to the, to the law. Mm. And then we look at the bill that come in just in 2021. We look at it that once again, the government is excluding our leaders from listening, excluding our authorities, excluding our voice mm. that we, we should have been part of this, mm. sitting in that mulka space that I was talking about, sitting in the, this is what the space we're gonna do so that we can say, how can we work together and help one another. This is what we have been expecting. But no, they think they know everything mm -hmm. about how they look after our children and leave out our local authorities, our, our voices, our, the self-determination, the local decision-making processes that come from the land mm -hmm. that should be working with the government. And so no concentration and it was now consultations in our communities. They just went ahead and said, we're going to in, introduce this. So there it is. Yeah, I got that one. No good. Much. It's no good. So they, they, they bring in this, they've announced this amendment in the last sittings three or four weeks ago, and just given you that much time to read through these really complex bills. But even, you know, this is why we have lawyers and kind of bureaucrats is to translate it from that lawyer English into normal English, let alone into 
Ke ora mama ta. Into yo, you go back to another language. Another language. Um and so from what I understand they do actually want to add another authority to that list like you proposed a few years ago you wanted to add a young authority to that list they've brought up this amendment so they can add someone to that list uh what i have here i've got the, the bill here the amendment section 29 3c part 1 section p uh the person in charge this is the the amendment they proposed to add as an authority the person in charge of an organization that provides a service or function in connection with children so that's their proposed amendment have they gone and done this and, and overlooked your proposed amendment again then yeah they have um, <clears throat> so what we have is now is uh, information sharing about our children by the mainly mainly balanda organizations mm -hmm. and balanda institutions and balanda managers and ceos in our communities in our young communities without any acknowledgement of our young authorities this is not self determination we have been calling about or the government have actually talked about and we ran on in my area mm. about me running on self determination and they ran on self determination mm. they said we are running on self determination as well this is the government but what self determination are they talking about mm. they are not working with the genuine yoruba self determination that we need to uh express ourselves mm. otherwise we'll be working together and it is not yormo and balanda working together we will not see improvements until yormo authorities are included and respected so things are not working well because we are not being respected and our authorities are not being included into in this space i like the governments to be meeting a benchmark each time they bring laws to the parliament they should be assessed to see if they are empowering communities mm. do they enhance self determination mm. but fine no it doesn't it doesn't work mm. so it's kind of like <clears throat> what we were, what you were talking about before about treaty isn't just a law that or this idea that sits by itself but it needs mm. to talk to all these other laws that are already there and when yeah. they bring in these new laws there should be that kind of test as it say does this support self determination yeah the more mm. this is the this is what is happening in our community this is what the government the foreign colonization um powers that coming into our yorongo autonomy mm. um they forget we are a sovereign nation we are a sovereign people we never ceded to any authority mm. not to any sovereignty we are still here and yet this government but the federal and the northern territory government or states ran ran the country if i can speak on behalf of other other indigenous community need to need to understand and recognize and realize and wake up to themselves that we are a sovereign nation and we have never seen to any sovereignty so this is where we want to say and we want the government to start turning around that thinking and start working with people mm. start working with us and things will work better if we work Palanda and Yorongo 
working together towards the future of our children. So, yeah. In the Mulka space. In that Mulka space. Yeah. Mm. And so that kind of, um, I was going to ask you a question about Yulmaram Murama, but I feel like maybe you just answered it in that question. No. Um, but I'm sure there's a lot of listeners here tonight that are wondering what those words actually mean. You got Yulmaram Murama. Yeah. 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 We stood. We about it and we we um, ran on the platform of the thing that we are going to campaign my people are going to campaign enough is enough we've done over 250 nearly 300 years now uh, under under the colonization and um, a foreign government um powers and authority nothing's happened so i decided to run as an independent from the yormoro which is the, from the platform of yormo law first we will show that we have we have authority we have a law that existed on this land mm -hmm. and we, we're going to stand and that's where i stood i ran on the platform of yormo indigenous law first that is what Yorongorong Murong is. Mm. And so Yorongorong, Yorongorong law, when we talk about law, we usually talk about parliament. And um, I, you mentioned a couple of times in, in, what, in just now, you were talking about this thing, Nara. Do you want to tell the audience just quickly a little bit about how Yorongorong or Yorongorong law and Nara and what the connection is there? Yeah. <coughs> Yolmo law is um, Yolmo Nara. Yolmo Nara is a chamber, a parliament mm -hmm. in the ceremonial ground, men's or the um, business ceremonial ground where men exercise their powers of. Um, in the closed window and women exercise their powers on their space. Mm. They work on powers to work on. That is the Nara, that is the parliament. Mm. And the laws that come out from there, this is the Yomoro Murongo. Mm. And, and um, the laws that we work, it's not something just because we are comparing it because the government have come with laws. Now, this is the government, this is the law that we have been living by, mm. by a long time. The ceremonies, people see as dancing, ceremonies, painted, people can see that and say, oh, that's a good, good show you put on and uh, we like the paintings and we like the paintings on your story. But what's written on paper bark or on, on, um, on the bark paintings rather, the paintings that are done, on the painting. Yeah. They are layers and layers and layers of constitution. Mm. They are layers and layers and layers of law. They are layers and layers and layers of of, of the structure, how a system works. Painted people, we are that is the parliament that we sit and we do it differently. And the stories from the land and from those ancestral creation stories that we get that and so law comes from land and that's what we have been practicing people came and saw that there's no buildings here people stop talking about this is i want people to stop talking about the governments to talk about this is Boundless possible. Mm. There's no such thing as boundless possible. And there is no such thing as empty land. There is no empty land here. I have been to New York and I walked on the streets. It's full of traffic and everything. Okay? Then I go under underground, there's the monorail, the trains, the 
structures around them. If I would have gone to the other side underwater, there would have been a bridge going across the building. And across the sky, there are airplanes flying, this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. They're all busy. Everybody's looking, doing their thing. But when you come to Arm Land and people see it, this is the remoteness of the Northern Territory, even down the center, mm -hmm. even down around Australia, within Western Australia or other places. People look, there's no, it's remote here. There's no buildings, there's no structure. Mm -hmm. But I ask to put on your spectacles of an Yolmo eyes. Mm -hmm. If you, maybe we create a Yolmo eyes glasses and then we look and say, oh, there is buildings here. Mm -hmm. There is structures there. The land is not empty. It's all full of structures. This is our, what our Yolmo eyes can see. This is what I want to create, that there is no empty land here. Mm. There is no remoteness. There is the boundless possible is just not possible at all. It's, it's not an empty space. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, I think I got carried away. I think mm -hmm. I'm, I'm enjoying this. Thing. I'm sure the, the audience are putting down a lot of fun. Um, comments talking about that they're learning a lot. Um, mm. I think all of us white Australians have a lot to learn about that, like you say, it's not empty country out here, it's rich with, with law and story and connection. You know, even the water, you know, you go up right up our, um, a space of where we are still un in control, it goes right up to the sky, the stars, mm. when you, the clouds drifting. The direction it's what we call Apia, that Doa and Irita, mm. the two moieties. I don't know how we got the name moiety, but I guess it says two two two, two groups of people. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Two half or one half of the other. Mm. So it's Doa and Irita. And the song lines and the stories keeps on going right up to the sky, mm. to the sun. We sing about the sun. Mm. We talk about the sun, the Milky Way, mm. the stars. It's just, it's just never ending mm. story. And it goes deeper into that. In the underground, there is always, people are talking about fracking, the fracking of, mm underground uh, waterway <laughs> or, or fracking underwood. Our song lines and our, there is traffic in, in the grounds there as well. Mm. We believe through our song lines, we believe through our ancestral streets, there are rivers that come up to the, the top end of the Northern Territory, Northeast Arnhem Land, down to Beetaloo, across Cross to the desert mm -hmm. and where the springs come out, there are creeks. And that's why we have said no to fracking. And that's why I have supported no to fracking because we know it will happen. There are rivers underwater. Mm -hmm. If they frack down there, it's going to uh, dirty our waters up here. Mm -hmm. It's going to dirty our waters up in the center towards Western Australia to other areas. That's why we're saying no, as well as song lines and spirits of our ancestral creators are there living. You destroy country, you're destroying us. You take away this part away from us, or will you take us away? Like children have been taken away to care, mm -hmm. in care, a child care protection under Bolanda law, well, in the country, different country, they're missing who they need to be. Mm. And those, they need to be back on country with people, mm. with our people, because we connect with the land and the land connects with us. Mm. You separate us, we are nothing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, no, you you're making my head full with, you know, kind of um, full with lots of thoughts. So, 
Um, maybe uh, we've got lots and lots of different questions and I see that the time's kind of ticking down, yeah. but I think from the comments, people are uh, really enjoying learning a little bit about what you're talking about. And maybe one, we can just talk a little bit more about, mm. you were talking about fracking and, and really hitting home about the way that your uh, land and people are connected and these underwater rivers and creeks that you talk about, are they just kind of bodies of water that are running here and there or are people connected through those waters? People are connected through those waters and we, our spirits are connected into that water mm -hmm. along those waters. And so you've got you know, relationships or rights and even responsibilities and obligations to you know, maybe the people or the clan on the other side of that spring or the other side of that water. Yes. So that's how it is. <clears throat> we connect it through someone. And when we uh, when we talk about who is the TO of this particular area, where the, where the practice, practice is going to take place, mm. people on the other end mm. who we have a song line alliance towards that area, we have authority too. Mm. So there's no such one, one TO that make up the one clan that says, okay, we are the TO. Mm. But they always, we always turn around and there's other people that has a space in this. There's other people that has authority in this. Other clans come from long way. So we all have authority and we all stood and supported. And that's what's the reason why I supported no fracking because our song lines and stories, it's, it's not song lines about singing and dancing. It's about law. It's about creating governance. It's about system of law, how, how we work together. Mm. Yeah, because that's a, another one that, and someone's just asked that, what is a song line? You know, and there's a lot of ideas out there in white Australia about no way, this kind of, you know, Aboriginal people walking around singing, but not really <laughs> getting what that means. Yeah. What is the power of that manike or that song line? Song line is about like a law being laid down, mm -hmm. the law that was laid down. And that is the song line that we work on that. And every now and then we, we see an amendment to a bill, mm -hmm. a bill that with amendment to the law, it's okay. Then we can maybe we, we do the same when we change some song lines and use didgeridoos and boomerangs maybe, then we can make an amendment to that. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what we're talking about. The song line and the stories of the land is exactly how laws are created. And it's the connection that we we work together. Mm -hmm. you know. And that kind of goes back to when you were talking about your rom, your law and that Nada chamber, that law chamber, um, that process of the ceremony around Nada and people, um, people wanting to change those laws, is that are they, are they just kind of singing and dancing and, and, and celebrating a law? Is there a, just like a white parliament, is there a process to changing that law? Is there a procedure? Let me tell you one story when when the Central Australia uh, Central Land Council and those elders came from Central Land Council area and the Northern Land Council in 1988 bark petition. When they came together and presented a bark petition, it was not just to welcome the Prime Minister and talk to them. It was two laws working together, two laws. Yeah. Um, the Central Australia and the Northern, Central Land Council area and the Northern Land Council area standing together and that was joining together so that they could hopefully meet up with the government, mm -hmm. meet up with the piece of paper, to do two bar petitions to meet up with the law on paper. And so, but we were ready. I believe the two land councils 
and the people, because I saw in Bandit, I was there at 1998 um, <coughs> when uh, Bobo and Paul Keating was there. Mm. I was there. And I saw this is very, very rich. This is powerful. We, I believe we're going to see change. I believe there was change with the Central Land Council and the Northern Land Council. People, the elders, uh, the leaders, the community to uh, clans from down center and clans from up here met together. They joined together. That was going to be, it. that was a treaty for us. And we just wish that the government was ready, but they weren't, they weren't. Mm -hmm. Just promises. There will be treaty. No, we're not talking about when you're going to have treaty. Let's have treaty now. Mm -hmm. That was, there was a powerful mechanism there that I believe I was there. When I look back now, hey, that was when that was when the treaty should have happened. Because mm. we were all ready. And yet the Prime Minister comes and says there will be treaty. Mm. Well, when is that treaty gonna happen? We're still waiting. It's getting complicated now. It's getting complicated. Mm. So we know what treaty is. We know what treaties. We've had treaty here before, especially in along the coast here. Mm. The Macassans and the Yorma living across along here mm -hmm. in, nine, in in 400 years ago, 300 years ago. No? What was it? Yeah, no. yeah. And we, there were there were people, Macassans and Yorma had treaty. And so we work together and live together. Now there is a story that we have made amendments to our laws and we work together now. And we sing songs about the Macassans coming and landing here, working with us. And people that walked up, uh, went over to live in Sulawesi, in Makassar, mm. and made a, a treaty that was strong. Mm. But sometime soon, the government, South Australian government, said came up here and said, "You know, the 1907 or something like that." Yeah, that, yeah. Said Macassans will have to leave. What power did they have? Nothing. Mm. It was just colonization. Yeah. You know, they had no authority to do that. Only thing they would have done was through a piece of paper or legislation. Let's work together. Let's sit together. Let's sit at a mulka space. Eh? Mm. Let's come and let's sit at the Mulca space and discuss this and work together. But it didn't. Mm. No. Sorry, I'm taking too much time <laughs> for the people. Um, no, I think uh, but I can definitely speak for myself and mm. it sounds like many of the other the people on the chat here um, are also really enjoying but this. What I would like to see in the world, I, in this, in this space in chamber here for me, working in this parliament, I have seen knockbacks, knockbacks, mm -hmm. government or treaty, the government that we wanted to have treaty, national treaty, and people are saying there will never be treaty. Uh, your, your call for treaty or your authorities or powers will never be mentioned. Even the United Nations uh, now declaration mm. states, but how strong are they? We want the UN declarations to be stronger that can really stand and change things for us. Mm. But we haven't seen that. I've been to the United Nations forum and meeting uh, in 2008, that's when I went and I spoke on treaty, I spoke on self-determination, I spoke on bilingual education. And uh, that's about all. And we passed on and we said, and I said that, uh, that the, the forum, United Nations forum, petitioned the Australian government 
to do this. Mm -hmm. And it's not strong enough. You need to be more powerful, more stronger that can change things. In 2018, before I went to the States, I handed a, a letter stick. Yeah, I handed a letter stick and looked like this. They can see that. Mm. Not that one, but yeah, like something that. like that. There's yeah. a letter stick with writing. Well, like, like this one, isn't it? Yeah, sure. except that was a painting. Uh, he had, uh, this is a slogan or the slogan of my or the uh, letter stick that we gave to the, his honorable Prince Charles and said, We want you to take this and give it to the Prime Minister of Australia. We want to have treaty and nothing happened. Mm. Don't know what happened. I might have given that letter stick to the prime minister and that was about all. I never heard anything about mm. that. So we are now looking for and calling for some authorities out there who can stop this colonization, mm. eh? who can stop this and give us a space. Give us self-determination. What is self-determination? I don't know what is self-determination, but we want to be who we are. We want the intervention to be rolled back, run away. And maybe the Australian government steps back again and comes and walks up and sits through delegated authorities at a more space. Because we're not here to say we want to take over the country back again. Mm. We're saying we want to we want to welcome you and we let's work together. Mm. Let's sit together. Sit together. But uh, and the uh, the jurisdictions we the Australian government legally or does not have jurisdictions our our authority. Eh? Because we are a sovereign nation. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we are a sovereign people. And you can say that, but what law can change that? Who can change that? We are calling now. If the government is not listening, there must be somebody out there that can listen, that can try and say these people are right, they deserve to be listened to. Mm. Well, I think part of that is more people waking up to the mm. kind of message that you have. And I, and I know that that yeah. is, people are, are waking up to that. And mm. I know that, um, like you say, uh, uh, it's about working together, Yonga Balanda. And I know that, yeah. you know, I, I've come out here as a Balanda on your land and, and, and felt welcomed and people wanting to work with and, and teach yeah. me and, and that's starting to happen around Australia. And a yeah. lot of uh, messages support coming through the chat tonight. Um, I know that the Northern Territory government, maybe even though they don't act like, act like it a lot, that they um, are very lucky to have you in the chambers and a lot of Northern Territorians to have your voice in that chamber, mm, yeah. speaking truth to power. And the government are worried about me. Yeah. I didn't come to take over power or anything. I came to say, let's work together. Mm. But they don't want to have a bar of it. Yeah. So, or maybe you just want your power back. Yeah, want our power back. Mm. So, uh, but yeah. really strange. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I want to thank everyone um listening i'm sorry if i've taken too much time but um i appreciate the audience and this is what i'm want to be this is who i am i want to stand and speak for my people and if there's an audience there can listen and support i'm sure you have those people who are listening and take the time to listen to me mm -hmm. i believe you are supporting our people so thank you. Yo, mm. yo, thank you. And 
cinema, of course, <laughs> yeah, for organizing this time. Yeah. And the closing, uh, what are they called? What's that? Like? Closing bridges. Ah, uh, you yeah. yeah. sorry, I should know this one. I saw that, saw that, and I said, well, it gave me... Like a closing building bridges. A building bridges. Well, one of the other. <laughs> building bridges is, is something that I said, there's another hope for us there. Let's, if we can, these people can echo my voice, echo our voice to the other side of the world, yeah. across the country into the chambers in, in, in the Canberra chambers. So we thank you. Mm -hmm. On behalf of my people, I, I thank you for being there. So, uh, so when, uh, when, uh, um, if people do, there was a question that came through about asking people, asking what they can do about this bill, the child protection bill. Um, we can continue to support Yingya to do his work, yeah. um, who's fighting this bill, but you can also contact the Minister for uh, Family, Territory Families, Kate Warden, the Honourable Kate Warden. She has a, um, you can find it on the internet. She has mm -hmm. a um, electric email um, or ministerial email that you'd be able to put through your um, concerns to. And I'm sure you can find the proposed amendment on the NT Parliament website. Um, you can also follow Yingya on his Facebook. Actually, I saw that you posted that um, article by Matt Garrick about your time in New York yeah. a couple of, not too long ago. Mm. Um, but Yingya is regular, regularly posting about Nuljama, about what you've been doing and things that have been coming through. Yeah. Um, and it's also a great place to learn more. He's, about Yungamata, as you're always posting in Yungamata. Yeah. Um, and last week, I uh, just been into Darwin, where at, for the launching of the Youth Yindi book launch, uh, writing on the sand, or writing in the sand. That was a really powerful. Uh, they, I speak loud, like I do, and they spoke loud. Mm -hmm. The Yoti in the band spoke loud on treaty and they took the message right around the world. And I'm sure, but here, Australia, they're still learning. We don't want to learn. No, we've got a long way to go. I think tonight showed us probably all us um, in the audience how much we've got to learn. Uh, so yeah. I'd like to thank you, Yingye, for all your time. No. Um, and thank you also to the audience and the uh, Reconciliation for Western Sydney Building Bridges Group um, yeah. and everyone out there supporting mm -hmm. your work and your message and I guess self-determination, sovereignty and um, fighting colonisation all around Australia. Yeah. Um, we've uh, probably run out a bit of time for questions. We apologise for that. But um, I think you'll all agree that it's been great listening rather than talking. Um, uh, I think we may call it there. I'm just going through some of the, um, the chats. If there's any last minute questions that you're really desperate to, to ask, put it through now and we'll see if I've got time. Although I know Yingya has to do... Um, no, see what we can do. Yeah. <coughs> Um, Tanya has a hand up. Yeah, sorry, go on. In you and Max, it's Jonathan here. Just, just on behalf of everyone, I just wish to thank you so much for sharing, sharing with us tonight. It's it's been truly fascinating, and it's just been wonderful to listen to what you've got to say. And it's uh, such a pity. That the whole of Australia cannot listen to your 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 message and your concerns. So I, I really appreciate you sharing with us tonight. Yeah, thank you. And I, yeah, and I don't wish to you know, waste it or.
stop you from uh, other things. So, thank you. <laughs> no, no, it's all right. I think there's, it looks like um, Tanya in Queensland has a question asking for someone to unmute her. So, if, I'm not sure if it's Jonathan or Sabine that has the, um, the, okay. the power to do that through the Zoom. Uh, who's got like a on the Zoom? Um, but we'd love to hear from you. Yes. Tanya. Cool. Can you hear me? Max, can yeah. you hear me? Yes. I, there is a question I'll be meaning to ask. Of, even though the about the bill tonight, have you got that cash as well, fair card and, and basic card up your end of the woods? I like to just know how you feel about it. Yo, so the question is about the, um, the cashless welfare card yeah. that's being let out in... Um, a whole bunch of different places, but mainly Indigenous communities and areas around different parts of Australia. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, the, the short answer is yes, Yo Yingya. Yes, yes. Um, the, yeah, so there was the um, the kind of the trial that ended and they, they reintroduced or continued it, what was that, late last year? or uh, Yeah, late, late last, last year. year. They did, yes. Um, that's when when Malandiri came up and um, you guys fought strongly against it, but unfortunately it, it, it got through the, the Senate. Got through, yes. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess, the, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, you know, so this is where we got the ball. It might have been okay. Some people might have been said, might have said, yo, that's okay, we can have the uh, debit card. And a lot of others would have said no, which um, makes a lot of people did. And it's going back to that, where is the self-determination? Where is our self-determination? Let us think about it. Let us decide and let's make decisions for ourselves. Give us that self-determination. Let us do it. And the other but thing is with, with that is because that cashless welfare card is not only going to the indigenous people and stuff, but also to the white people. Like there's some areas that they're around Bundaberg and stuff that's got the cashless welfare and, and they're white people, but they don't like it either. And the government sending different mixed messages about this well cashless welfare card. And I just wanted to hear from you, just um, from, um, how you really feel, feel about it. I'm mm. against it, really. I'm, I'm, I'm dead against it. And I'm just, I'm just, yeah, I just want to hear, hear, hear that. Yeah. Yes, I'm against it too. And a lot of people are against it. And um, sadly, it's, it hasn't been explained properly, like no proper consultation. So our people still don't know what's going on. And it's still supposed to be a trial. Yeah. Um, thanks for your question. Thank you. Tanya. Thank yeah. You. And it sounds like, I guess, part of the problem too is yeah. that, as Tanya said, and you've said that the, the decision came from outside. From outside. And yeah. there wasn't, it, where's the self determination, whether it's a, yeah. a white or a black or any community, where's the consultation, where's the, the consensus building from within the community. No, yeah. and from from here in Arnhem Land or around in the in the territory, there was a loud call saying no, mm -hmm. we don't want it. But what powers do they have to say? We we still going to go ahead and uh, uh, make it a law. So uh, that's another not trusting in our self determination not giving us the authority. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Um, look, look, and I've got, we've got all these questions here about homelands and, and, and COVID, and we did talk a little bit about Yungo Um Hi, I just want to say hello to Yingara from Broome. I'm um, Jinky Bura, and I'm totally with you with self-determination and uh, pretty much the dishonor of what's happened to our people um, at first light. I'm a Ngumbal woman, a Jogan woman. I'm from Wadebul, 
from the great northern lands of Jajalalala Buru, which is Broom, a grand uh, land of great sand dunes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, pretty much um, it's all right that uh, we want a treaty, but um, are we treating with the government or are we treating with the corporation? And um, our message is, is that the governor general has to protect the, the interests of the Commonwealth people for the queen to make sure that the GG comes and sit with the original people of these lands and pretty much uh, bring the uh, coming together in a way forward through the self-determination of our people and the people who are here with us on these countries and lands. And they breached the uh, royal orders from the very beginning. And um, mm. I question the fact that these people are imposters and acting and posing as government in this country and that we the people the law the land may we be black white yellow red are the true um law and government the people's parliament on the ground so um i'm a strong sovereign woman i'm a law woman i follow my seven sisters dreaming i'm jongai big sister and i follow that very strong from bugarigara from creation ground common ground here in jajalala buru so we stand strong and um, also in terms of jurisdiction of one and uh, uh, co uh, juris corpus secundum is about, not about the courts, it's about the evidence of the parties who can, um, who can produce the evidence of finding. And we have worked in good faith and I'm sure that you have two uncle, brother, son, you know, it, your capacity there and we take everything from you and, and wherever we can to, to be able to um, serve our right and to stand strongly in peace and in neutral way forward to form full remedy. And that is what we want is full remedy. And we're speaking as the grandmothers also and for our children and their future. And um, in due respect, these jurisdictions were served to Her Majesty the Queen, 14 days notice, duress, right law, diction to speak. Who has the right to speak, okay? And your 14 days notice and honor to rebut our jurisdiction of one. And it's in good faith. We don't want to fight. Mm. We've been fighting a long time. We want peace. And it's time that everyone comes to the party and wave the, the wave flag in that way. Um, but that's the reality of where we are. And I hold position here at um, in the West, in the Northwest. And I stand strongly um, and exercise my rights of determination as an ancient voice of these lands and as a keeper, defender of the faith and a gatekeeper for all those as a rights to their human rights, flesh and bones of the earth rights, God given yeah. right. So please, and I, I just wanna say thank you. Please come and check out the, uh, the Origini Crown uh, website. There's a lot of information there. We've done serve jurisdiction as we've all done everywhere. I've also come with the Mother Earth delegation from from around the earth with all our different nations who so are doing the same thing and we're all getting on the same pace. We are the United Nation. I did say to Dr. Moya in the United Nation meeting in Sydney in 2014, I think, I pretty much said to Dr. Moya that we do not need to rectify 169 of the convention order to regain our sovereignty. We never surrendered it. So it's time that it, the establishments and these heads of states come clean and actually come to the party because they are in violation with crimes against our people and crimes against humanity. So, um, you know, please let's stop the wars and let's bring remedy. Thank you for hearing me. Lovely to meet you all. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Maja, for your um, for your comments and your support. And it sounds like you're doing some some strong work on your end too. So yeah. there's people fighting that good fight all over the place. Um, mm -hmm. We've just noticed that um, Frank from where did it go? Uendemu has got his hand up. Um, if uh, yeah. If, can you um, hear me? Here we go. Frank, you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. I'm, I'm I can hear you. Okay. I, I just got a question for Iniga. Uh, Iniga, yeah, sorry for pronunciation. Yeah. Um, okay. Some years ago, the Northern Territory government tried to make it a lot harder for people to get buried out in the bush. Now, I remember that you put in a whole very strong uh, words with the NT government 
uh, to try to stop that. What I would like to know is, did you succeed in stopping those amendments or uh, is it a battle that's still going on? Um, Did you hear that one? No, yeah, can't hear. Yeah, yeah, so Frank, maybe I'll just repeat that question so we can all hear it. The connection's a little bit bad on your end, I think, but he was talking about people getting buried out of country, buried out bush. And I think that relates to the Burial and Cremations Act that um, the Territory Government proposed in what, 20, 18 or a few quite there's some years ago that you um, you opposed yeah um, and his question is is that still is that fight still going on did that go through or did it get knocked back uh, it's still going on uh, I think uh, burial and cremation bill would be I think they worked on it working on it yeah but you did you did your um, you made a lot of noise you made a lot of noise around and they, that time and they pulled it down. Yeah, well, they didn't go through with that no. that act because you um, made so much noise about that, that made, problems in that. Yeah. So, um, so they pulled it out and they are working on it again, mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. and which they will uh, bring it back to the floor again sometime. Yeah. But it might be They don't be a give up, better. do they? They Sorry, don't they give up, do they? No, no, they just want to keep going and and we we uh but we're gonna to have to keep fighting as well. So okay and yeah. so um but you've made some good progress. You're working the the mid the the responsible minister, Mr. Paik, has um the, the original bill, if I remember correctly, was kind of just brought out of thin air and, and, and thrown into parliament. Yeah. Mm. But um, you made a lot of noise and now they're listening to you. And he came out here not too long ago and you took him around Arnhem Land mm. and, and showed him, I guess, um, talked about your ways of, of burial and cremation and ceremony and how important that is. Yeah. So at least he's listening and walking with me uh, coming out this way which i haven't had that approach from other the other ministers and he's i believe he's going to work with me but um i'll keep on trying to talk uh on this and uh, get something done and get something someone to listen to us so Okay, um, thank you for that. Thank you, Frank. Oh, thanks for the question. Um, how do you how do you feel, Billen? Billen? Yeah. Um, I think maybe that's probably a good note to um to go out on. Um, I'm glad we did get a few questions in in the end. Then. Um, Yingyi's phone is is running hot, so families are wondering where I am. Uh -huh. <laughs> but <laughs> um, so maybe that's a good signal also that it might be time to end. Yeah. Um, but there'll always be emails in my my office. Uh, if we can uh, help anyway, try and support anyway. I'm um, I'm always I'm here to support my electorate, my territory and my people around Australia, indigenous people. Mm. So I will always stand and support indigenous um, communities. Mm. Yeah. And batteries going flat. Oh, it's, everything's selling us that it's time to wind up. Okay. okay. Thank you, Yen Yiya, so much again for all your time tonight. And, yeah, uh, many thanks to Max too for being so helpful. Yeah. He's my interpreter. <laughs> You're a great team. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan. Thanks for everyone for for coming and listening. Yep. Okay. Right. Good night then. Thank you. Thank you once again. In here, Max. Yeah. Okay. Well.